Hotel openings, ribbon cuttings, and red carpets. That's what a family photo looks like for the Trumps. That's because for them, family and business are pretty much the same thing. Fred Trump passed his real estate empire down to his son Donald, and President Trump has kept things all in the family. His oldest son, Don Jr., along with his daughter, Ivanka, and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, all hold high-ranking positions in the Trump Organization or as his senior advisors in the White House. And this week, Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, dropped some spectacular testimony that could lead to criminal charges against Don Jr. Here are the clues to watch. First, Stormy Daniels. The hush money Cohen paid to the porn star just before the election to keep her alleged affair with Trump a secret. Don Jr. is now implicated in that mess because Cohen showed up to Congress with checks, one of them allegedly signed by Don Jr. And what were the checks for? Cohen says it was all part of that scheme to keep Stormy quiet. So why is that important? Well, if Don Jr. knew what the money was for, it means he could be prosecuted for violating campaign finance laws. Second, the Russian dirt. I'm talking about that infamous meeting at the Trump Tower when Don Jr., Jared Kushner, and Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, were told they'd be getting damaging information on Hillary Clinton from Russia. So what did Cohen say about that meeting? I recall Don Jr. Leave, leaning over to his father and speaking in a low voice, which I could clearly hear, and saying, the meeting is all set. And I remember Mr. Trump saying, okay, good, let me know. That contradicts what Don Jr. told U.S. lawmakers two years ago under oath when asked, did you inform your father about the meeting or the underlying offer prior to the meeting? And he answered simply, no, I did not. If he lied, that's another crime. The third Cohen bombshell, well, it's the Trump Tower Moscow and another possible lie by Don Jr., this time about the negotiations to build that tower with Vladimir Putin's help. Don Jr. has said he knew very little. Again, he said it under oath to U.S. lawmakers, and you can go to jail for lying to Congress. But Cohen testified that Don Jr. and Ivanka were kept well-informed about the tower deal. Listen to this. Who were the family members that you briefed on the Trump Tower Moscow project. Don Trump Jr. and Ivanka Trump. Do you recall how many of these briefings there might have been? Approximately 10 okay. in total. Democrat Debbie Wasserman Schultz is a member of the House Oversight Committee and she pressed Cohen at the committee meeting on whether Trump's kids are in too deep with Russia. The company was involved in the deal which meant that the family was involved in the deal. If Mr. Trump and his daughter Ivanka and son Donald, Donald Jr. are involved in the rump in the in the Russian Trump Tower deal, is it possible the whole family is conf conflicted or compromised with a foreign adversary in the months before the election? Yes. That was a big moment, and the Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz she joins us now from the Capitol building. So. Congresswoman, you, of course, were head of the Democratic National Committee when those hacked emails were published uh, through the Russians. Uh, now Michael Cohen has said that Donald Trump Jr. and Sr. knew way more about that meeting than they uh, have revealed. Uh, you want to hear from Don, Don Jr. before the House. What, what are you hoping to ask him? Well, the, the purpose of doing hearings like we did with Michael Cohen is to shine a light on the darkness. And, and there has been plenty of darkness when it comes to the actions that have been taken by Donald Trump, by Ivanka and, and Jared, Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, both of whom work in the White House now, both of whom apparently, as a result of questioning, could possibly have been compromised by the, the Russians because they were involved in a major business deal that was lied about and concealed, even though that was supposed to have been terminated, according to the, to, to the testimony and the statements made by the president and his family members and his uh, associates. So we have to get to the bottom of this and, and get these questions answered. The only way we can do that is if we have these individuals come before the, the, the Congress 
and we have an opportunity, whether it's in public or in private, to ask them questions. Being able to show the American people that Congress is acting in, even if we don't have a president who respects our Constitution and will act in the national interest, they do have a, a, a Congress that will do so, and that's what being, uh, that, that's what elections are all about. De Democrats are in the majority now, elections have consequences, and thankfully, it's oversight and accountability that are the consequences of this past election. How significant was Cohen's testimony about that check that Don Jr. Uh, allegedly signed that was made to reimburse him for the, for the Stormy Daniels hush money? I mean, it was very chilling to see a check written from the president's personal funds and also written by his son, Don Jr., dated during a time that he was president, where he was repeatedly violating campaign finance law to continue to cover up and cover his tracks for the hush money that he paid so that the American people wouldn't learn before the election that he had had two sordid affairs. The, the sordid affairs aren't what's important. It's the cover-up that's important, and we have to make sure that we can continue to get more in information so the American people have an opportunity to make decisions about what needs to happen going forward, and they, do the, they make those decisions through their representatives in Congress. And then, of course, we have an election coming up in 2020, so that'll, that, that'll be important information for the American people to have for that purpose as well. More to come. Debbie Wasserman, thank you so much. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. That was Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Washington. So what do we know about Don Jr. and his relationship with Trump Sr.? Donald Trump Jr. was born on December 31st, 1977, the eldest of three children. According to GQ, his father left the hospital shortly after his birth to attend a New Year's Eve party. Ivana writes in her memoir that she wanted to name their newborn Donald Jr. But Trump replied, you can't do that. What if he's a loser? After he left Ivana for Marla Maples, things were reportedly rough between father and son. But it didn't take long for Don Jr. to begin working to win his father's trust. He told Forbes, I know the entertainment stuff helps us, but somebody's got to stay here to remind everybody that we build buildings. And now Don Jr. is in charge of those buildings. He and brother Eric lead the Trump organization. All right, I'm going through it now in my mind, you know, having to get on the stage in front of you know, millions of people. Don Jr. became a political ally too, campaigning alongside his dad during the U.S. presidential campaign. But what do we really know about their father-son relationship? Mr. Trump had frequently told me and others that his son Don Jr had the worst judgment of anyone in the world. And there sure have been questions about his judgment. He once claimed that if his father acted like Hillary Clinton, quote, they'd be warming up the gas chamber. And then there's the infamous Skittles tweet comparing refugees to poisoned candies. Don Jr. wrote, if I had a bowl of Skittles and I told you just three would kill, would you take a handful? The tweet ignited outrage but it also attracted support from the alt-right wing of Trump's base. Like his dad, Don Jr. has millions of followers on Twitter. The Democrats hate Trump. And he's a frequent guest on Fox. Their dream in life is to try to find something to get Trump. The divorced father of five is even dating a former Fox anchor. But if Cohen's allegations are true, his father still doesn't really trust his son. His dad may not trust Don Jr.'s judgment. The Democrats in Congress want him to testify. And if it's true that you can't indict a sitting U.S. president, maybe his family is the next target. Joining me to talk about that is Jill Weinbank. She's a former prosecutor who was involved in the Watergate investigation. She's in Milwaukee. So, Jill, do you think that the evidence is there from Cohen's testimony and maybe other places to, to actually indict a member of Donald Trump's family? The meeting in Trump Tower is a clear sign of cooperation with the Russians. They were clearly willing and ready to accept that information. They were cheerful about it. All you have to do is look at the emails that preceded the meeting where Don Jr. says, if that's what it is, I love it. That shows a consciousness of guilt, and it's something that he should be held liable for. Um, the evidence about Ivanka is possibly less uh, 
less interesting so far, but that's because we haven't heard it. As is appropriate, when an investigation is going on, the prosecutor cannot reveal that evidence. There are so many things that haven't been done. So, for example, unless Don Jr. is a target of the investigation, then why hasn't he been called to testify? Certainly he has knowledge. Certainly there are questions that any prosecutor would want to ask him. So that makes me think that he is possibly a potential indictee and that we should wait to jump to conclusions until we hear that happen. That would be a really big deal. Um, and of course, in the meantime, uh, the Democrats in the House, they want to hear from Don Jr., they want to hear from Ivanka and Jared Kushner. How key are they to get into the bottom of the Donald Trump story? So they have good knowledge about dealings with Russia that are, of course, inconsistent with their own testimony, particularly Don Jr.'s testimony about the Trump Tower and dealings with Russia in general. And the key to their testimony is whether they could be the thing that makes Donald Trump cave. Does he care enough about his children, should they be found guilty of any crimes and be indicted? Would that be something that he would be willing to take action to protect them? There is this big debate about whether or not a sitting president can be indicted or not. You don't agree uh, that he can't be indicted. But a family member could be, could go to jail. Do you see that as a good tactic for almost trying to strong arm him into telling the truth, cutting a deal, resigning? Of course, there's no question that family members can be indicted. I think it's equally unquestioned that the sitting president can be. A vice president has been and can be. There's nothing in our Constitution that would limit indictment of a president, even while he's a sitting president. And no one is above the law in America, and no one should be above the law. And if a president can't be indicted, that leaves only impeachment, which is a political decision. That doesn't address criminal violations of existing law. And so I think he should be, but certainly you are correct that family members can be.